um, one of the things I wanted to talk about in terms of relationships is being real. God talks quite a lot about of it, uh, quite a lot of it, uh, quite a lot about it in the Bible. <laughs> I'm getting there. Come on, <laughs> nah. Um, and and it really, it, it's really interesting what he says about it. And I want to open you guys up to what he says about it. Um, and so I'm going to start with a story. A lot of you know this story. It's the story of the lost son, right? And it's a message about these few stories that I'm going to tell you about. Um, They're messages about being real and also about God's grace. If we don't have a full understanding of God's grace and forgiveness for our lives, then we will not be able to relate to other people on the same level. Um, So I just want to throw this out there and see what you guys think. So I'll just do a summarized version of it. Um, basically, there's this there's this guy, and he decides, okay, he's gonna he just wants to he wants to disown his father. He wants his inheritance now, and he goes to a far faraway land, and he spends all his money on wild living. You know, living on whores, living, doing this. You know, living it up pretty much. You know, without any moral restrictions. And and when he he there's at the time he runs out of money, there's actually a famine in the land, and he comes to his senses, and he's looking at these pigs, thinking, man. I want to eat those pods that those pigs are eating. And he's thinking, my gosh, what the hell has happened to me? I'm going crazy. And he, so he's like, oh man, this is absolutely nuts, man. I have sinned before man and God, and I need to, before God and my father, and I need to go back to my father and ask for his forgiveness and say, man, at least hire, hire me as a hired hand. And so this is what it says in verse 20 um, of, I think, I think it's Luke chapter 15. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to his servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring on his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the fattened calf that we, we, so we may be, we may celebrate with a feast. For the son of mine was dead and he has returned to life. He was lost but now is found. And so the party began. And it goes on talking about how, how his, um, his brother you know, who's been faithful with his father, you know, never left and anything, is talking to his father and saying, hey, what's up? You know, um, here you are, you know, you've, you've fattened this calf and you're having this huge celebration for this sinner who's come back, you know, and I've been serving you faithfully and you've never done the same for me. And, and essentially his fa- the father says, hey, he's lost and now he's found. That's awesome. You know, we should all be celebrating for this fact. Yes, you're my son and I love you dearly, but he is lost and now he's found. Let's celebrate that. And for me, that's interesting because this is how God decides to betray himself. He betrays himself as the father that says, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. And you can just imagine it, you know, the son's trying to get some kind of an answer out. And then, and then his, the father's pretty much like, no, be quiet. You know, you don't, don't, I know, I love you. Thank you for coming back home. And he embraces him. It's interesting that God portrays himself as the father like that. Not the father we're used to seeing or when we think of when we stuff up and we come to God. That's not the father we think of when we confess our sins to him. He portrays himself as a lovesick father. The second part, um, so the party is, the second thing I wanted to highlight from that story is the party, the party that's thrown is for the son that's the sinner that has repented, right? And not for the son that has always been faithful. And essentially that's where the emphasis of the story lies. It's, it's a party that's thrown, thrown for the sinner, not for the one that's faithful. And, you know, I tell you, it's a bit weird. I don't, I don't think that's the way we would engineer it. 
You know, we wouldn't be, we would be re- rewarding the faithful ones, like in school. You'll be rewarding the faithful one, not the, not the sinful one, right? Which is, which is really bizarre. And it's not, you know, I think where the point where God is coming from, he's saying, it's not that I don't want you guys to be faithful. Yes, I do want you to be faithful. But I am more happy that this sinner has come to repentance than you guys have stayed faithful. And that's, that's quite a big statement to make. Um, in one of his previous parables, it says, Jesus says, which is kind of illustrating the same thing. He says, in the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and never strayed away. I think that's a concept we, we all need to understand and comprehend. In Matthew 9, verse 13, it says, I have come to save the sinners, not those who think they're already good enough. He talks of this other parable, the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke 18. And it goes like this. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other tax collector. A Pharisee was like a religious leader in the day. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like the other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but he beat his chest and said, God, Have mercy on me, I am a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. Just some interesting concepts throwing you out throwing out to you guys, so equivalent that would be like maybe me standing in front saying, Thank you, Lord, you know, thank you, I'm a you know, one of the leaders of this church, thank you, you know, you're making me a whole more holy in the day. And someone comes in through the back and says, Lord, I'm so sorry. I've done so much sin, you know, I can't even I can't even turn my head towards you. And who was the one that was justified before God? It was the person at the back. <laughs> 